Hello, my name is Christy Koo, and I'm a registered nurse with the Mass General Hospital Cardiovascular Disease Prevention Center. In this video, I'll be demonstrating a variety of strength training exercises as well as stretching exercises. The strength training exercises will develop muscle tone, strength, your core strength, as well as balance. In a separate section, we'll be doing stretching exercises to improve your flexibility. This video is designed to complement the individual care that you will receive as part of your cardiac rehab program. So we will provide for you specific advice as to when to start the strength training exercises and the stretching exercises, and specific advice as to which exercises to include, which ones to avoid, and possibly which ones to just defer for the time being. We'll also include specific advice as to the weight that you'll be using for the strength training exercises. So our goal with the exercise video is to help you develop confidence so that you can exercise safely on your own, effectively, and enjoyably so that you will sustain your exercise program. In this part of the video, we're now going to be doing a variety of strength training exercises. We'll be doing a, a few for the lower body, the upper body, and a couple dedicated for balance and for improving abdominal strength. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the lower body exercise, and I'm gonna demonstrate the easiest version that you may start with. So you're just going to sit in the chair, again, sitting forward and your spine tall, put one leg out, and you can have one hand right on your thigh. So we're gonna lift the right thigh, and you can actually feel that quadricep or thigh muscle working. So you're going to lift, hold, release, down. Lift, hold, release, down. Lift, hold, release, down. And of course, you're going to do it on the other side as well. So again, you can feel that quadricep or thigh muscle working. Lift, hold, feel, come on down. Lift, feel, come on down. And one more, lift, feel, come on down. Now as you get stronger, you'll build up to 16 of these. And when you can do 16 easy, you may be able to go to the next level, which is a sit to stand. So I'm gonna demonstrate using this chair with arms. So again, sit forward on the chair, and you can, in the beginning, use the arms for a little support. Lean your body weight forward and press up as much as you can using your thigh muscles. Then, if you need for stability, reach back, come on down, and slowly sit. So press forward, press your feet into the floor, lifting up, and then, not so pretty, you're gonna be just putting your buttocks out back to the chair. So one of the things that often people do is press on up really fast and then kind of plop down. So the plopping down, you're not going to um, strengthen your quadriceps or thigh muscles as effectively. So you really wanna just do it slow and easy. So the more, the slower you go up and the slower you come down, this exercise will be much more effective. So when you've worked up to doing 16 of those very confidently and comfortably, you may want to move on to doing this exercise without the chair. And you can actually increase a little bit more intensity by adding some free weights. So I'm going to go ahead and move the chair over here and demonstrate using these five pound weights. So stand tall, get your feet planted just a slightly more than, with, than your hip width apart. And again, you're just sort of gonna stick out your buttocks as if there's a chair there and then come on up. So release down and press up. 
So as you're bending the knees and putting your buttocks out to the back, as if you're sitting in a chair, remember to move nice and slow, pressing up slowly and releasing down slowly. And let me turn just a little to the side so that you can see the proper form. So I'm holding the weights out to the side and I'm pressing my buttocks back and coming up. So the mistake sometimes that happens is that the hips come forward <laughs> and there's kind of a bending here. So you really want, like you're trying to sit at an imaginary chair behind you. So releasing down nice and slow, pressing up, and being sure that you're not holding your breath. So work your way up to 16 of these. So we're now going to move on to the upper body. And I already have my five pound weights for the biceps. And you can do this sitting, or st but I'm going to demonstrate it standing. For all the standing uh, strength training exercises, you really want to get a good uh, foot plant with your feet planted just slightly more than hip width apart, and what we say is soft knees. So be careful not to hyperextend and really straighten the knee. Keep them bent slowly. With the weight in either hand, you can lift just one up at a time, coming down, or you can imagine that this is one big pole and you're lifting the pole up and releasing down. So just like we did the sit to stand and the modified squat nice and slow, you're going to be lifting this up two, three, and down two, three. Up two, three, and down two, three. Pay attention to the wrist so that they stay in neutral and not flopping in or flopping out. Keep them in neutral as if you're kind of balancing a coin on the top of the wrist. So up and release down. I'll turn to the side so again you can see the proper form. So pressing up, releasing down. Up and releasing down. So you would choose a weight or we would help you choose a weight until you could do 16 of these very confidently and then we perhaps would talk to you about advancing to the next weight. Once you get to around 10 pounds, you may want to just do one weight at a time. So what that would look like is you would put your foot up on a chair or a bench, press your elbow into your knee, and then do the same thing, up two, three, and down two, three, nice and slow. So this just gives a little bit more stability. Okay, let's stop there. And we're going to move on to the triceps. I'm going to start with the easiest version of the triceps by simply having you uh, extend your hands back behind you. So again, I'm going to get into that proper stance, feet just slightly more than width, uh, hip width apart. I'm going to keep those knees soft. I'm going to plant your hands by your hips and simply press back like this. So this will strengthen the tricep. And this can be done with a weight. In general, you would choose a weight that's a little bit less than what you're doing for the biceps. So I'm going to demonstrate. And you can press both back at once. Or you can just choose to do one, come back in, and do the other, come on back in. Again, you would work up to doing 16 of these comfortably. And then you might want to advance to the next level, which is a modified chair dip. So I'm going to put these weights down and use this chair to demonstrate. So initially, you might want to just be using your arms to lower your body. So you can stand up using your legs, hold on to the chair, keep the elbows pointed back, and gently lower down, really using your arms. 
So pressing up, maybe using your legs a little bit, but then really using your arms to lower down slowly. Now when you get to the point where you're a little more advanced and that's easy, then you use your arms to press yourself up off the chair and release down. And press nice and slow and come on down. And as you press again, sometimes if you count, that keeps you from holding your breath. All right, you would work up to 16 of these uh, confidently and very comfortably. This might be plenty to do, but um, another advanced version is to use the chair and actually have your weight off of the chair a little bit. So I'm gonna demonstrate holding the sides of the chair. I'm gonna walk my feet out a little bit and keeping my elbows pointing back, I am going to drop slowly down and press up. Release down, nice and slow. Not, 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 not so far, just needs to go just a little. You can really feel those triceps and come on up. Release down, come on up. Again, you would work up to doing 16 of these. All right, so those are, that's the set for the triceps. And now we're gonna move to the front and side raises. I'm, you can do them in the chair, but I'm gonna demonstrate them standing and with the five pound weights. So again, feet planted, just slightly more than hip width apart, soft knees. And this first one, I call this the angel wings. <laughs> All right. So side raises out, hold, come on down. This is working your upper arm deltoids out, come on down, and out, come on down. You would work up to 16, but let me show you a common mistake. Sometimes people really rush through this <laughs> and are way up here, and then they kind of drop them down, like they're flapping their angel wings. So this you really want to just extend out, feel the deltoid contracting, and then come on down. All right, you can also do this as side. So I'll turn a little bit to the side here. Again, uh, soft knees, just lifting one up and come on down. And then the other, come on down. So I usually advise just one at a time. If you do two at a time, just be very, very mindful of your low back so that you're not swinging and letting your hips come forward. All right. So I would definitely recommend just starting with one at a time and to maintain proper form. And we're going to move on to um, a row. And you can do this in a chair, but we have this nice bench right here, so I'm going to do it right on the bench. If you have a chair or don't have a bench, then you can use a chair, just put a pillow if your knee is a little sensitive. I'm just going to show you the proper alignment. So I'm going to bend one knee and put one arm here. And then this arm is hanging down. And my, be very mindful that your shoulders are staying parallel. So sometimes as people put the weight down, they'll come down. But you only want to stay so it's square. And you're just lifting up. And you're kind of squeezing the shoulder muscles and your upper back muscles together. So very slowly, I usually count up two, three, down two, three. Up two, three, down two, three. Again, when you count out loud, you have a little more awareness that you're not holding your breath. So that is the row. All right, the next set of exercises will be uh, for your abs. We're also going to, at the end, demonstrate, I'm gonna demonstrate a, a wall push-up that you can do. But I'm gonna move on to strengthening our abdomen with a simple exercise you can do using a chair. All right, so once again, you're sitting at the front of the chair. 
and your spine is tall, erect, but not rigid. And you can simply take your hands and put them right on your heart and really lift yourself up. Take a nice breath in and breath out. And then all you're going to do is lean back. Pull the navel in, activates the abdominal and core muscles, and then come on up. So it's very simple, but you just want to go back, hold, breathe, and come up. So activate the core first, pull that belly in a little bit, hold, 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 but don't hold your breath, and come on up. You can vary the arm position. You can try it like this, and coming up, and releasing back, and coming up. All righty. So the next set of exercises are for balance. And it's very important to practice balance, but to do it very safely. So be sure when you're new to this exercise that you have a chair or a wall that you can easily reach out to stabilize yourself. And the first one is simply balancing on one leg. So I'm going to demonstrate first holding onto a chair so I always know that if I begin to lose my balance, I can simply reach out and it's very safe. But if you feel very confident, you can just lightly hold on. Get your feet, um, stay with hip width apart. Shift your weight over, starting with the right foot. Shift your weight to the right and simply lift up your left leg in front of you and hold, breathe. Now, if you feel confident, you can begin to let go. Breathe. Breathe, 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 and come on down. So you can repeat this three or four times, just lifting the leg. Balance, let go, release. So you would repeat on the other leg by putting the chair on the other side. The other balance exercise that I like to teach is simply learning to shift your weight back and forth from one foot to the other. And this is very important if you ever decide to get uh, involved with learning uh, Tai Chi. So you're going to start with your feet, again, a little bit hip width apart, soft knees. And we're going to start by shifting our weight over to the right and lifting the leg. So you'll have this chair if you need for balance, but maybe you don't need it. And then put the toe down, ball the foot, and heel. Shift to the left, lift the right, hold, then point the toe, ball the feet, and heel. Shift, lift, balance, toe, ball, heel. Shifting to the left, lifting the right, toe, ball, heel. Okay, so that's some balancing exercises. And the last set, we'll be doing a wall push-up. I'm now going to teach you a couple versions of a traditional chest press. The first one's very traditional. We're going to use this bench. I like to have the incline up a little bit because I find it's much more comfortable that for people than lying flat. But if you don't have a bench, you can do it on the floor, and I'll demonstrate that too. But let's start with the bench. So you're just going to sit here, and using your strong core muscles, just leaning back and adjusting. So some people, their chin is really tilted up like that. You might need a little bit of a towel behind your head. And you're going to bring the weights so that they're uh, level with each other. Imagine that you have a big pole here and the weight is on the ends of that. So we're simply going to lift up and come on down. You might visualize that you have a ball right on top of your chest and you're moving around it. So lifting up, releasing down. And lift, circle, up, and come on down. So again, nice and slow. Up, two, three, down, two, three. Now for this one, I really say it, it's 
it's best to exhale as you're lifting the weight up. So take a breath in, exhale as you're lifting. It's almost as if your breath is pushing the weight up. So taking a breath in, exhale, and coming up to the center. So I'll demonstrate that one more time, coming down and lifting up, circling around that ball, exhaling, pause, and come on down. So just like all the other exercise, strength training exercises, you can work up to 16 of this. And we'll give you advice about when to advance the weight as well. Let me demonstrate, if you don't have a bench at home, but you really like this more traditional chest press, I'm going to demonstrate on the floor. So coming down to the floor, get yourself spine lined up. Again, you might need a little bit of a pillow or a folded, um, uh, like a beach towel behind you. If you find that your chin is lifting up and that there's a big curve underneath your neck. So otherwise, tuck the chin a little bit so you have good alignment, bend the knees. And in this, your elbows won't be going down like it is on the bench press, but the majority of the motion is there. And again, you have that big ball. You're going around, coming up, circling down, releasing back, pressing up, releasing down. Coordinate this again with your breath, taking breath in, exhale, let that exhale push the weight up and release down. And one more time, coming up and releasing down. Okay, so we're going to move on to doing a wall push-up. I will now demonstrate how to do a wall push-up. This is primarily for your upper body and chest, but actually you can do it in such a way that includes your core and your lower legs. So let's um, approach the wall and you want to start with finding the proper placement of your hands. So I would say put your hands next to your shoulders and just press forward so that they are parallel and then walk your feet back enough so that you actually feel like you're pressing into the wall. Now to get the real feel of what it's like when you're doing a regular push-up on the floor, lift the heels and you'll feel that it's activating the calf and lower legs and upper legs and then bring awareness to your uh, central core. Pull that belly in just a little bit. This will activate the core and we're just going to bend the arms slightly. So heels are lifted, core is activated, find your breath in, find your breath out. And for this, I would say take a breath in, exhale as you bend the elbows down, keeping the body nice and in aligned and straight. So you don't need to go so far down that your head is hitting. Just allow the elbows to bend slightly, keep the heels lifted, engage the core, find your breath. So I find it natural to breathe in and then exhale on the down. Pressing away and releasing down, pressing up. For the wall push-up, it's really important to remember to advance very slowly and mindfully as you increase the repetitions that you're doing. It's not uncommon to get a little bit of chest soreness as we use the pectoral muscles, the chest muscles, and even the little muscles that are between the ribs. You will receive individual guidance and attention regarding how to progress all the exercises, especially including the wall press. I'm now going to demonstrate a variety of stretching exercises. These are perfect to do after your cardio or aerobic workout 
and then move right into the stretching. Or if you've been um, already engaging in the strength training, then you might do your cardio exercise, your strength training, and then follow up and end with a series of stretching exercises. Primarily these will be for your legs, your lower legs, your upper legs, your hips, as well as your chest. All right, so I'm going to start with a simple calf and Achilles stretch. So you can sit in a chair. I'm sitting here on a bench and extend your right leg out and simply bring your toe up. And this will extend and stretch your calf muscle as well as your Achilles tendon. So you simply need to hold that. Now most stretches you really want to hold for about 30 seconds. And it turns out that if you're using your breath as a counting, you'll be able to tune into your breath as well as get up to about 30 seconds if you count to five. So breathing in, out, one. Breathing in, out, two. Breathing in, out, three. Breathing in, out, four, breathing in, out, five. Okay, so you would repeat this as well on the other side, getting into the alignment, and you want to feel a gentle pulling or stretching and no pain. So again, you would just extend your leg out, lift the toe, and connect to that breathing and the counting. Breathing in, breathing out, one, and count up to five. So this is one way of doing your calf and Achilles stretch. We're going to move on now to a hamstring stretch that you can do from that same position. So I'm going to start off the right leg. You can have the toe up, but it doesn't need to be pulled up as um, close or pointing to. Just put it kind of in neutral. Bring awareness to the alignment of your spine, lifting up. Bring awareness to your core, pull your belly in slightly, take a nice breath in, and then just extend forward from the hips. And you should feel uh, a, a gentle pull on your hamstrings. Now these are the muscles that are on the back of your leg. So if you're feeling any pain, you really need to back off because the muscles will actually tighten up instead of stretch and release. So again, Find your breath in and out and one. Breathing in, out for two. Breathing in, out for three. Breathing in, out for four. Breathing in, out for five. And gently pull up. Now with this bench, it's really nice to do a seated hamstring stretch, and I'm going to demonstrate that. So we're going to sit back here. I'm going to do that same right leg. So sitting up nice and tall, have one foot planted, and just bring your awareness to your alignment. Now simply sitting up, you might feel already enough stretch. If it feels like it's way too tight, just lift up your knee a little bit to give it your, um, your body a little bit of slack. And then lifting up and shifting from the hips, come forward and connect to the breath in and out for one and count as we did before up to five. Or if you can, you can straighten that leg up and lean forward. Again, you would want to include doing both your right and left leg. All right, so the next stretch we're going to do is for your thighs or quadriceps. I'm going to show an easy version to do and then another version that uh, it's a, if available for you to do and you have good knee flexibility you can do it. But let's start with the easy version and you're simply going to bring your right foot forward, your left foot back and bend the knee a little bit so that you feel a pulling, a gentle pulling, on the very top of your thigh. Here's your hips kind of over forward and down So for your hip flexor. Again, connecting to the breath. Breathing in, 
breathing out, one, breathing in, breathing out, two, breathing in, breathing out, three, breathing in, breathing out, four, breathing in, breathing out, five. So I've done the left leg and you would want to switch and do with the uh, right leg extended. So a more advanced version is to do a uh, standing version of this. One thing that's really important is not to kind of gr kick your foot up and grab it, because this can actually provoke a little bit of a muscle spasm in your upper um, hamstrings. So I say take a step up. And I'm going to first demonstrate on my right. I'm going to use this strap, but you could use a towel, or you could grab onto the back of your sock or your pant leg. I'm simply going to put my hand close. Just gives me a little bit of slack. I'm going to hold for balance, but I'm going to stand tall as I can. And then very gently, I'm going to let that knee come down. So the knee is pointing down. And I'm lifting my heart up, finding my breath in and out, breathing in and out for two, breathing in, breathing out for three, breathing in, breathing out for four, breathing in, breathing out for five. Again, you would want to repeat this on the left leg and so again, just shifting. Be sure you lift the leg up to avoid that kicking back, lifting up. Get your towel or your strap or the back of your sock and simply drop the knee. So with your feet planted and your thigh pointing down to the floor, you're lifting your heart up, connecting to the breath in the breath out, and use that count up to five to get a 30-second very effective stretch for your quadriceps. All right, the next stretch is for your hips, and I'm going to demonstrate it in two ways, one using the bench and then also on the floor. So sitting again on the chair forward, to start, put one leg out so that you can get familiar with how flexible or tight your hips might be. And a lot of walking and biking are great exercises to help your heart get strong, your lungs get strong, but it can lead to a lot of hip tightness. So one leg out, take the other leg and just cross it over. So this motion begins to open up your hip. Walk your foot up to the top. And if you're comfortable, you can be right here. Then you're simply going to bend from the hips to feel a nice stretch. So as I'm doing this, I'm feeling a nice stretch through this hip and upper leg as well. Again, finding your breath in and out. Sometimes when we stretch, we tend to hold our breath. So it's really important to tune into that breath and get the practice of tuning into your breath to practice breath mindfulness, which really helps lower stress hormones, reduce heart rate, and help your breathing be nice and easy. So again, you would count, breathing in, breathing out, one, breathing in, breathing out, two, breath in, breath out, three, breath in, breath out, four, breath in, breath out, five, and come on up. Of course, you would switch to the other side. So this would look like crossing over, work your way up, come up. This is the more advanced version here. And then if you can keep your spine up nice and tall, you can actually lean forward. Probably one of my favorite ways to do this exercise is to do it laying down. And this is actually an exercise that you can do in bed. So I'm going to demonstrate. But if you don't like to get to the floor, definitely try it at least lying in bed. So coming down. Now, in your bed, you're going to have your, you could have your head supported, 
by the pillow. And you might want to start again with just getting that feeling of how open your hips are. So maybe one, then the other. Okay. Then plant your feet. And if you're comfortable, then you can take your right foot, put it right on the center of that left knee. Your hip is open. Now this might be enough to feel a stretch to the hip. If you want to deepen, and you can, you can lift the leg up. You can hold behind the thigh. Again, uh, finding your breath in and out. And it protects the knee if you flex the foot a little bit. And come on down. And of course, you would switch and do the other leg with that breath counting in, out, one, all the way up to five. So I really encourage you to try this when you're lying in bed. It can also uh, be a gentle movement to get you awake. So you can do all that range of motion we did earlier as part of the warm up. And the last stretch is for your chest. Since I'm lying down, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. So again, you can do this in bed, have your head supported with a pillow, bring awareness to your spine so there's nice alignment, and simply bring your elbows out to the side and then lift your palms up together. So this is just a gentle, very gentle chest stretch. And for a very easy back stretch, since we're on the floor, you can put your hand in the small of your back, put a curve in there, and then press your low back into your hand by rolling your hips down and hold and release. This one I would just move through back and forth. So this you don't need to sustain the stretch, just moving your back very gently, rolling the hips down. So these are some basic stretches. Remember to tune in to your breath, being very, very mindful that you're not holding your breath, which is easy to do, again, whenever you're learning something new. By using that breath count, you'll hold each stretch for about 30 seconds. I like using the breath count because it keeps you from just watching the, the time pass and working on connecting to your breathing. And the third thing is to really remember you should feel a comfortable pulling in the muscle because if you overstretch thinking you're going to achieve more, actually the muscles tighten up and will not allow you to relax deep into the stretch. Okay, so we'll be giving you, again, individual advice for uh, how you might modify some of these stretches and which ones are best for you to include in your comprehensive exercise program.